Next up, DigiKey and Adafruit present. Hi on MPI. All right, this week's INMPI is from Diodes. I know. Well, you know, first up, I want to say, they do make diodes, and they make great diodes, but they also make things that are not diodes. And I feel like Diodes Incorporated, they don't get enough love. I mean, they're not one of, like, the big five semiconductor companies, um, but they do make really good stuff. In fact, um, our favorite regulators, our power converters and regulators, are from Diodes Incorporated. So I do want to give them a shout-out. And so when I saw this uh, product show up on digikey.com slash new, I was actually, and some people are like, oh, like, do people like, you know, are, are you told what to put on IMPI? No, believe me, the things I pick, these are things I'm actually personally interested in. And um, you're going to see this chip appear in a lot more of my designs because this chip is awesome. Yeah, okay. This is how we decide. This is how I find more in my This is how chips. we decide on what things we're going to put in our products. Right. So uh, the AP63300 and 001 uh, which looks like this. Very exciting. It's a TSOT 6. What is it? Um, I'm glad you asked. Here is a leaflet from Diaz Incorporated, which kind of covers everything. New product announcement. This is a 3-amp, low quiescent current, synchronous buck converter with great EMI performance. But let me tell you what's awesome about this um, buck converter. Because, you know, I, I use low dropout regulators all the time. And even somebody asked me, you know, I think on the last Desk Lady, they're like, why don't you use buck converters or, or buck boost converters instead of a low dropout. And I'm like, well, usually there's a big price difference or a cost difference. Um, so here's what's really cool about the this series. So this is a, a table with a couple different chips on it, but I'm talking about the two ones at the top, the 6300 and the 63301. Okay, so the first thing that's awesome about these is the input range. It's 3.8 volts to 32 volts. So like you can put almost any voltage in here. Like this is great. You can run off lead acid batteries. You can have it work in a vehicle you can have it run off of like solar panels you can run it off like anything right um alkalines and up the output voltage is also a very wide range it can go from 0.8 volts that's the lowest up to vn and when it gets very close to vn it actually kind of makes the chip turn into a low dropout regulator but you can read about that in the data sheet um basically just 30 volts up to 30 volts input up to 30 volts output so this is great because a lot of the buck converters that we've seen are like, oh, max is out at 12 volts or max is out at 6 volts. This one, it's like pure range, right? I've never, I've never even used more than 24 volts in any of my designs. So this is, this is great. Um, good if you, I know there's people who are like, I have robotics projects. I want to have a buck converter for my robotics project, but I have uh, 14 volts in or something. Not a problem. Or 28 volts in. Number three. Uh, the A out, three amps continuous. Love it. And you don't need any external MOSFETs or diodes. It's synchronous. So all you need um, is a couple of passive components, and uh, we'll show that um, next. Um, there's two versions, and I'm going to chat about the two next versions, uh, why there's an O1 and an OO. There's slightly different operation modes and quiescent currents, and I'll explain um, that shortly. Uh, but let's show off the... Uh, typical application circuit. Again, I love it. You don't need any external components. There's even a little boost converter thingy inside uh, booster for the uh, high side FET. So you know, that's the C3 capacitor. Input bulk cap, output bulk cap, voltage divider, feedback loop with a little feedback uh, cap, a little mini cap there just to stabilize it, and your big inductor, and you're done. That's it. There's even an enable pin. Love it. Um, like I said, goes up to three amps. Uh, the, there's going to be differences in the efficiencies when you're talking about lower current. Lower current, less than 100 or 50 milliamps. So this is the, if you look at the bottom, it says the AP63300, which I'll just call the, the 300. So the 300 has uh, good efficiency pretty much across the board. You can see here are like various VNs and Vouts. You're always going to be basically looking at, you know, 70 to 90% efficiency from a couple milliamps all the way up to three amps. This is a log scale, of course. The 301, you'll notice, um, has a totally different efficiency uh, scale. Once you get below, you know, about 100 milliamps, um, the efficiency plummets. So if you need high efficiency, uh, whether it's at low or high uh, current draw, you'll want the 300. Um, there are some situations where you'll want the 301. 
Um, oh, the quiescent also matters. Uh, the quiescent current for the 300, uh, the one that has a high efficiency um, across like all the current is gonna be only 22 microamps. The 300 one is, I think it says 280 microamps, 200, 200 ish microamps. So a lot worse quiescent, you know, pretty high quiescent current for the 301. Um, so you're probably like, well, wait a minute. So the 301 is, has much higher quiescent and is much less, much less efficient at low current. Why on earth would I want that? Um, the reason you would want that is this is uh, the 300, right? So the one that's high efficiency, low quiescent. And what I want you to look at in specific is in the top right, you've got that V out uh, ripple. So this is the ripple at low current, right? That says, I think, 50 milliamps. Um, so you'll see that you, you, this version of the buck converter changes the way it does um, the PWM output, the frequency plummets to get better efficiency at low current, but it's a lot noisier. You see that that range there is, is, is the, it says 100 millivolt per division. Whereas the one that is fixed, uh, more fixed frequency, um, and you can see the top right, this, the graphs are not in the same location, so just be aware. The frequency is in the top right, you see the frequency stays stable. Um, and because of that, the output voltage ripple is much, much lower. So basically, you know, use the 300, you're gonna get better efficiency um, at low current, and you're gonna have a low quiescent current, lower quiescent current across the board. But if you have, um, if you're doing a lot of low current stuff under 100 milliamps and you need low noise, this might not be good for you. They're pin compatible, so you can you can switch and swap. Start with one, try the other. Um, there's an eval board. I even picked up an eval board. I just love the simplicity of it. Um, it is a TSOT chip, which is kind of weird. You might be wondering, like, well, how, you know, it's doing three amps with internal MOSFETs. How is it uh, di um, uh, di uh, dissipating all that current? Uh, that heat from that current draw. Um, well, first off, the internal MOSFETs are, are pretty low. I think they're like, you know, 75 milliamps. But also this PCB has uh, two ounce copper and you can kind of see that, I'll show on the overhead too, the pads are like really big for the TSOT. Maybe, yeah, you wanna zoom, you wanna zoom in. I'll press the zoom in. Here, near, we're always talking about near and far. Um, so that's the TSOT there and you see this has, why it's much, wider than you would expect a TSOT to be. Um, so it uses this for, for current carrying and also for um, heat dissipation. You see the big chunk inductor, the bulk capacitance, and then of course here is the resistor divider. And then on the bottom, um, they, they have a little bit of a copper um, ground plane as, as the heat sink because this doesn't have like a central heat sink pad. And they use a bunch of vias to help. So there's a, a big ground plane um, stitch here. Oh, sorry, actually, it's not the heat sink. I, I'm, I apologize. I didn't read that. So that's right, that's the, that's the A uh, that is just like a, a heat sink, sorry, a um, large ground plane with a larger ground plane on the bottom. Um, but the heat dissipation, I think they do talk about, they just say use two ounce copper and just use um, these big pads. So that's the only thing, but otherwise, Comparatively, it's a very easy package to solder. You're never gonna have any rework issues with this. You can even hand solder it if you want. So I think this is a great comparison. And then of course, uh, the best thing about this chip is the price. It's like 40 cents on a reel, um, which means it's, it's basically the same price as an LDO. So if you're using a 7800X or if you're using an, a 1117 or any of those you know popular LDOs, you can like toss it out and use this, get it, you know, 10, 20 cent inductor. You're gonna have wide input, wide output, extremely high current, no heat sink required, um, and for the same price. So you get like better performance. Uh, you do have a little bit more noise because it's a, it's a buck converter, but overall, like, you know, I looked and in this class for this range of inputs and outputs and current, this is definitely the cheapest one. And I've always had a great experience with um, Diodes Inc converters, uh, they're rock solid, even though they're like often the least expensive available. Um, I've never had an AP2112 break on me. They've just been so solid. So I really like this buck converter. I think, you know, don't be scared off by the fact that it has this wide input, wide output and high current. It just means you can use it for anything. Like I'm gonna use it for stuff that is, you know, five volt to three volt conversion you know, with only like maybe a half an amp of current draw. Why? Because why not? It's 40 cents. Put it on everything. 
put it on your cheesecake. Give it to your kids for Christmas. Whatever. It's 40 cents. How can you go wrong? It's the AP 63300. All right. And that is this week's INPI. Very cool, unique product. Good find. Hi, on MPI.